This is One on One. Hi, I'm Steve Arbaro. This is One on One. It is my pleasure to introduce Dr. James Wittig, Chief of Orthopedic Oncology, Hackensack University Medical Center. Good to see you, Doctor. Hi, Steve. Um, I want to talk about uh, this limb sparing surgery that you're doing. You work in the area of uh, sarcomas that people have. First of all, a sarcoma is, an, is another word for cancer? Yeah, sure. A sarcoma is a cancer of the musculoskeletal system arising from usually either the bone or the soft tissues around the bone or the muscles. So an orthopedic tumor, all right, these cancers. Uh, well, an orthopedic tumor doesn't have to be cancerous. It could be benign as well. Certainly. Mm -hmm. But say we're talking about a sarcoma, orthopedic tumor, that is, in fact, a problem. They often happen, what parts of the body? Is it shoulder, knee, thigh? Yeah, so your thigh is the most common site. And when you think about it, your thigh has got the most muscle and the most bone in the entire body. So probably that's the reason why it's one of the most common sites. Around the knee is very common in the shoulder. And probably a lot of that has to do with those areas have very active growth plates. And uh, children and adolescents are, are predisposed to getting tumors in those locations. And, uh, and later the adult population. We're about to show uh, an x-ray of the shoulder area. I want you to talk to us about the shoulder area, which I was like, really, that could happen there? As we see, see the x-ray, talk about it a little bit. Sure. So uh, you see on the x-ray, uh, that's the shoulder girdle. This is looking from the front of the patient to the back. And you see the scapula there, which houses the glenoid or the cup. And then you see a long metal, what's called a modular segmental tumor prosthesis in that location. And this is a patient who had a cancerous tumor or a sarcoma developed from the proximal humerus. This particular sarcoma was called an osteosarcoma. And you can see that in this x-ray view. The upper part of the humerus, the part that forms the ball of the ball and socket of the shoulder joint, is affected by that tumor. And you see white, fluffy, cloud-like density uh, arising from the upper part of that bone. And that white density is actually the sarcoma that's arisen from the bone and is producing bone itself. You know what's so interesting here? As you describe that, I'm sitting there looking at the notes that say, pre-1980 in a situation like this, or in the knee, pre-1980, is it fair to say that the most common protocol, or very often it would be amputation? Certainly, yeah. The, the most common way patients were treated with this were an amputation. And in the 1980s, uh, chemotherapy was developed and somewhat perfected, and uh, doctors and medical oncologists and orthopedic surgeons tried giving patients uh, preoperative chemotherapy mm -hmm. to kill the tumor, which they felt if they could kill the tumor before the surgery, it would make it much safer to take it out and uh, let them get, achieve a, a wide margin on the tumor, a satisfactory margin to save the limb as opposed to doing an amputation. So today, life, excuse me, limb saving procedures much more common, right? Certainly. Why? Yeah, about 95% uh, of patients can be treated with a limb sparing surgery who has a sarcoma. And a lot of that has to do with, um, with a combination of uh, perfecting surgical techniques over the course of time, advances in imaging modalities so that you, with an MRI you can see the exact dimensions of the tumor, know that it's not encasing the neurovascular structures which are necessary to save in order to save the limb, and then various chemotherapy protocols that have been developed that uh, help kill the tumor. Dr. Whittaker, let me ask you this. It's more of a personal mm -hmm. question than anything else. I'm curious about this. Your specialty is, is a fascinating one because you've had such an impact on so many people's lives. You save limbs, save lives. What caused you to go into this field? And did you have mentors that shaped your life in this profession? Sure, well I think uh, the, the main reason why I went into the field was because of the big impact that you can have on patients in terms of saving their lives and, and saving their limbs. And, uh, and uh, a big percentage of the population that's, uh, that develops sarcomas are children and adolescents. And watching those children be able to grow up and lead very productive lives in the future. I worked with two innovators in the field 
uh, Dr. Ralph Markov and Dr. Harold Dick, uh, who were both at Columbia Presby Presbyterian Medical Center when I did my residency. And both of them were um, innovators in terms of uh, initiating limb sparing surgery when amputations used to be performed. I saw many of their patients who were 20 years after having surgery and uh, doing fantastic. And we would do operations together. So it was very fascinating work and just really the impact and the, the dramatic results that you had with patients was very self-fulfilling. What has it meant to you personally? Describe it. Um, well, I, uh, I feel everybody has, you know, a purpose in life, and I feel that one of, my, one of my talents has been able to do this type of surgery and to really help others, and that's what's been most important for me is to help others who are in serious situations, and not only do we save their lives, but give them a, a great quality of life afterward, and uh, that's, that's very important. Talk to me about where this field is moving forward, was going toward, because it seems to me that when we talk about pre-1980, that amputation was the most common protocol when someone had this kind of sarcoma in a certain area of their body. Great advancements in the last 30 plus years. Where do you see it moving toward? Well, I think, uh, I think there's going to be more uh, developments in the area of uh, prosthetic reconstruction and different types of uh, metal internal prostheses like joint replacements. Uh, there's going to be um, many innovations there that make them last longer and function better. But also on the medical side, I see where we're advancing toward better chemotherapy protocols, better medications that I wouldn't be surprised in 15, 20 years, you just take a pill for one of these and you probably don't even need surgery. Seriously? Seriously. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. there's a whole multidisciplinary approach and it sounds so complicated and then you say there's a pill. It doesn't sound like it makes sense. Well, at some point in time I might be out of a job, but... Uh, you'd be happy with that? But I'd be happy with that. <laughs> but uh, the... Uh, but you see over the course of time, they're, they're finding targeted uh, genetic problems with these tumors, and they're targeting those specific problems with different drugs, and it turns the tumor off. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's been in, very successful in one particular type of tumor called the gastrointestinal stromal tumor, which is a type of sarcoma that comes up in the GI tract, and patients take Gleevec, the tumor disappears. So, Well, doctor, you don't need me to tell you this, because your patients and their families tell you all the time that you're doing really important work and uh, everyone appreciates you doing it. Dr. James Wittick, Chief of Orthopedic Oncology at Hackensack University Medical Center. Thank you for joining us, we appreciate it. Thank you very Stay much. Right there. One on one will continue right after this. Thank you, doctor. Thank you so much. One on one with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by activists in cooperation with the American Medicine Chest Challenge, MagnaCare, New Jersey Sharing Network, the law firm of Gibbons PC, Community Education Centers, PSE&G, Sun National Bank. Promotional support provided by The Record, North Jersey's trusted source, and NorthJersey.com, and by New Jersey Monthly, the magazine of the Garden State, available at newsstands. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New New Jersey area.